Hello students, welcome to ePatashala. I am Dr. Kalayarasi, serving as assistant professor in the Department of Textiles and Clothing, Avanashingham Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Today, we will have a discussion about antimicrobial finishes. There is a growing interest all over the world for functionality of textile products such as waterproof, wrinkle resistance, UV protection, flame resistance and resistance to antimicrobial attack. Among the functional finishes, antimicrobial finishes of textiles are considered as the most significant because fabrics are considered as second skin. The inherent properties of the textile fibers provide good environment for the growth of microorganisms. Microbial infiltration causes cross infection by pathogens, development of odor, staining and loss of performance properties of textile materials. To protect the wearer and the textile product, antimicrobial finish is applied to textile materials. Hence, there is a global demand for antimicrobial finished textile materials, especially in the field of medical textiles. Numerous antimicrobial agents are available for textile finishing like triclosan, silver nanoparticles, quaternary ammonium compounds, etc. However, due to their synthetic origin, they affect the environment. Hence, natural antimicrobial agents are gaining momentum for its excellent therapeutic potential and efficiency in treating infectious diseases. The objectives of the present module is to enable the students to know about the different antimicrobial agents, to understand the need, application and uses of antimicrobial finish, to know about the assessment and standards for antimicrobial finish. We all know that the microorganisms are the tiniest creatures not seen by the naked eye. They comprise a variety of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, algae and viruses. Bacteria are unicellular organisms which grow very rapidly under warmth and moisture. They are subdivided into gram-positive, gram-negative, spore-bearing and non-spore-bearing type. Some types of bacteria are pathogenic and causes cross-infection. Fungi are mildew or complex organisms with slow growth rate. They stain the fabric and decline the performance properties of the fabrics. Fungi are active at a pH level of 6.5. Algae are typical microorganisms which are either fungal or bacterial. They require continuous sources of water and sunlight to grow and develop darker stains on the fabrics. Algae are active in the pH range of 7 to 8. Now let us see how textiles act as carriers of microorganisms. Bacteria, both pathogenic and odor causing adhere to the fibers and leads to subsequent growth and damage of the fibers. Natural fibers are easily attacked by microbes because they retain water readily and the microbial enzymes readily hydrolyze their polymer linkages. Cellulosic fibers such as cotton, jute, wool and flax are most susceptible to microbial attack. In synthetic fibers, the microbial growth is slower as compared to natural fiber because they do not retain much water. These fibers retain the stale perspiration resulting in microbial growth and multiplication. If the synthetic fibers are coated with finishing agents like polysiloxane and polyethylene emulsions, they allow the microorganism to degrade the polymer. Under conducive conditions, nylon, polypropylene and polyester fibers are also susceptible to microbial attack. Next, we will have a discussion about the effect of microbial growth on textiles. The presence of microorganisms in textile substrate causes health problems, odor and finally fabric deterioration. Microbial attack leads to discoloration and loss of functional properties like elasticity and tensile strength. During the growth of microorganisms, they break down nutrients such as sweat and soil and produce odor causing molecules. For example, gram positive bacteria Staphylococcus aureus generate 3 methyl 1 2 hexanoic acid, which causes unpleasant body odor. Also, bacteria convert human perspiration into foul smelling substances such as carboxylic acid, 
aldehydes and amines. Pseudomonas vulgaris, a gram-negative bacteria, breaks down urea into ammonia and leads to the generation of odor in baby diapers. Garments provide moisture and darkness and this enhance the microbial infections. Clothing soiled by urine and feces promote the growth of E. coli, Brevibacterium ammonia genes and Proteus mirabilis enhances diaper rashes and associated infections. Fungus Aspergillus species produces lung diseases. Microbial growth increases with increasing moisture. They grow well in dark except phototropic species. They produce pigments on exposure to light and cause colored stains on fabric. Next we will see the need for antimicrobial finish. To protect the textile materials from microbial degradation, discoloration and staining. To prevent cross infection by pathogenic microorganisms. To inhibit the colonization of odor causing microbes. To increase fabric durability. To reduce the frequency of laundering and thereby saves water and energy. Next, we will have an overview of the classification of antimicrobial finishes. Antimicrobial finish is subdivided into three main groups. Rod proofing. In this method, antimicrobial finish is given to textile substrate to provide protection either long term or short term against physical deterioration. Hygiene finishes. In this method, antimicrobial finish is applied to textile substrate to control infection by unwanted microbes. Aesthetic finishes. In this method, antimicrobial finish is given to control odor development and staining. Next is antimicrobials. The term antimicrobial refers to substances that provide protection to textile materials against microorganisms. Antimicrobial agents differ in the structure chemical composition, mechanism of action, durability, interaction with microorganisms, impact on human and environment. Antimicrobial agents that inhibit the growth of microorganisms are known as biostats. Example, bacteriostats that inhibit growth of bacteria, fungistats that inhibit the growth of fungi. Antimicrobial agents that destroy or kill the microbes are known as biocides that is bacteriocytes, fungicides, etc. Next, let us see the mode of action of antimicrobial agents. Antimicrobial agents act in various ways. The main mode of action are coagulation of proteins, disruption of cell membrane which maintains the integrity of cellular contents, removal of free sulfidyl groups essential for function of enzymes. Inhibition of key enzyme responsible for the metabolism of the cell and causes cell death. The antimicrobial agents function in two different ways. The first one is leaching type. In this type, the antimicrobial substances diffuse into the growth medium and destroy the microbes coming into contact with it. The leaching type antimicrobial agents are not chemically bonded with the fabrics and can be removed by contact with moisture. The major disadvantage in this type of finish is poor durability and it may penetrate the skin and cause skin irritations and rashes. The second type is non-leaching type or biostatic finish. This type of antimicrobial agents is molecularly bonded with the fabric substrate. They would not diffuse off from the fabric substrate but inhibits the microbes that approach the textile surface. Thus, they do not lose their effectiveness by becoming depleted nor they cause harm to anything other than microorganisms and do not cause any health problems. These agents do not lose their effectiveness even on repeated laundering and hence exhibits good durability. This type is most suitable for textile materials that are having human contact and durability is considered. The antimicrobial agent adsorbs onto the surface of the negatively charged bacterial cell and leads to the disruption of the cytoplasmic membrane thus inhibiting the microorganisms. Based on the activity against microorganisms, the antimicrobial textiles are classified into two types namely passive and active. Passive materials do not contain any active substances but their surface structure 
example lotus effect produces negative effect on the living conditions of microorganisms. Active antimicrobial substances act upon either in or on the cell. Next we will see the characteristics of good antimicrobial agent. It must exhibit broad spectrum of activity against bacteria and fungal species. It must be non-toxic to consumer and the environment. It should not cause irritation and allergy. It should have durability to washing, dry cleaning and hot pressing. It should not affect the strength, appearance and handle of the fabric. It should not kill the resident flora on the skin of the wearer. It should have selective activity against undesirable microorganisms. It must not have any side effects for the producer, consumer and environment. It must be easily applicable. Next, we will have an insight into the types of antimicrobial agents. Antimicrobial agents used in textile industry are of two types, natural and synthetic. First, we will see the natural antimicrobial agents. The sources of natural antimicrobial agents are medicinal plants, marine and terrestrial organisms including fungi and bacteria. Compounds extracted from different parts of plants such as bark, leaves, roots and flowers containing common coloring materials such as tannin, flavonoids and phenonoids exhibit strong antimicrobial properties. These antimicrobials are eco-friendly and non-toxic. The first example is neem extract. Neem belongs to the plant family Malaceae. The active ingredients of neem are found in all parts of the tree but in general seed, bark, leaves and roots are used for the extraction purpose. The neem extract has a potential to inhibit the growth of both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Aloe vera belonging to family Liliaceae is known as lily of the desert. Aloe vera has been used as a skin care product for more than 2000 years. Aloe vera possesses antifungal and antibacterial properties which can be exploited for medical textile applications such as wound dressing, suture, bioactive textiles etc. Prickly chaff flower. Prickly chaff flower is one of the Ayurvedic herbs found all over India. Prickly chaff flower exhibits antimicrobial activity against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Tulsi leaves. Tulsi leaves are used as antimicrobial, insecticidal and antiprotozoal agent. Turmeric or curcumin, a yellow fluorescent pigment has been used as a colorant for dyeing of wool, silk and cotton. The turmeric imparts antimicrobial property because of its bactericidal activity. Chitosan. Chitin, a poly beta 14 N acetyl D glucosamine, is a natural polysaccharide. Chitin is found in many naturally occurring creatures such as yeast, fungi, and bacteria. It is a prime constituent in the exoskeleton of crustaceans like crab, shrimp, and insects. It is a most abundantly found polymer, second only to cellulose. When chitin is acetylated to about 50%, then it is called as chitosan. Chitosan has inherent antibacterial activity, biocompatibility and biodegradability. The positively charged chitosan interacts with negatively charged residues at the cell wall of fungi or bacteria. The interaction changes cell permeability and causes the leakage of intracellular substances. The next one is sericin. Sericin is a natural protein derived from silkworm Bombyx mori. It constitutes 25 to 30% of silk protein. It covers the fibroin fibers with successive sticky layers that help in formation of cocoon. Sericin is removed during the processing of silk. Sericin has antibacterial, UV resistant, oxidative resistant and moisturizing properties. Natural dyes. Natural dyes obtained from various plants possess antimicrobial properties. Pomegranate is a potent antimicrobial agent due to the presence of tannins. Tannins possess antimicrobial activity against wide range of bacteria and fungi. Henna rich in naphthoquinones and walnut rich in juglone exhibit antibacterial and antifungal activity.
the antimicrobial activity of the Texas substrate impregnated with the natural dyes depend on the dye uptake and the presence of functional groups. Let us next learn about synthetic antimicrobial agents. Antimicrobial agents that are manufactured by chemical synthesis are called as synthetic antimicrobial agents. Synthetic agents are further classified into organic and inorganic agents. Organic agents. Many organic compounds are used as antimicrobial agents including drugs and chemotherapeutic agents. The first example under organic is triclosan. Triclosan is a diphenyl ether derivative. It is a broad spectrum antimicrobial agent that has been incorporated into personal care products such as toothpaste, soaps, deodorants, antiperspirants, detergents, cosmetics, antimicrobial creams, lotions and hand soaps. Triclosan cleaves the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria and inhibits a specific enzyme that the bacterium needs for its survival. It has bacteriostatic activity against a wide range of both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The next one is quaternary ammonium compounds. They have a silane base at one end of the molecule and a long chain of carbon atoms at the other end. They form a covalent bond with the fabric. When a microbe approaches the fabric, the free end of the molecule reacts with the cell wall and causes leakage of the microbial cell and causes the cell death. Polyhexamethylene biguanide. The halide form of polyhexamethylene biguanide hydrochloride is applied on cellulosic materials. They form hydrogen bonds with cellulosic fibers. When the fabric treated with polyhexamethylene biguanide comes in contact with the bacterium, the biocide interacts with the surface of the bacteria. This results in the leakage of inner material and causes death of the bacterium. Monomethylol 5,5-dimethylhydantoin. It provides durable antibacterial activity for fabrics that contain cellulose. It acts by cleaving the cell membrane of the bacterium. It is covalently bonded with the fabric. It showed significant inhibition against both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Next, we will see the inorganic metals and its oxides. The first one is silver. Amongst all antimicrobial agents, silver is the most important with respect to textiles. Silver has broad spectrum of antimicrobial activity. Silver is generally safe and effective in controlling bacteria. Two principal methods of incorporating silver in textiles. The first one is blending with the polymer during or prior to extrusion and the second one is fiber or fabric coating. Silver is inert in metallic form but ionic silver is effective against several different microorganisms including E. coli, Candida and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Silver in ionic form is commonly applied in fabrics proposed for wound dressings. Silver ions react with proteins and enzymes causing structural changes in the bacterial cell wall membranes leading to cellular disintegration and the death of the bacterium. Silver destroys enzymes that transport cell nutrients and weakens the cell membrane or cell wall. Silver ions interfere with bacterial electron transport and inhibit DNA replication. Nanosilver has gained attention in its application to textiles. The nanosilver particles are effective because of the large surface area to mass ratio and modified surface charge. Copper Copper is another metal that has been used for disinfecting materials for hundreds of years. Copper is considered to be a safe antimicrobial agent. Copper is incorporated in textiles by impregnating prior to fiber formation or by plating on to the fiber surface. Copper is not widely used as an antimicrobial agent as silver because the efficiency of copper is less than silver. Zinc Zinc exhibits antimicrobial activity. Fabric treated with zinc sulfate exhibited antibacterial activity against Cephalococcus aureus and E. coli and enhances wound healing. Zinc nanoparticles also acts as effective antimicrobials. Now, let us have an insight about different antimicrobial finishing methods. Antimicrobial agents are generally applied 
to textile products as final finishing process whereas in some cases it is applied in the fiber stage. For synthetic fibers the antimicrobial agent is incorporated during extraction. The textile fabrics can be finished with antimicrobial agents by different methods. The first method is by using spun in additives. The antibacterial finish is given to the synthetic fibers by incorporating antimicrobial agent into melt and spinning dope solution. Various antibacterial agents can be incorporated in the polymer matrix during the fiber or yarn manufacturing process. The second method is padding. This method is simple and easy to perform. But the durability of the finish is poor because of weak linkages between the fibers and antimicrobial agents. In this method, the fabric is immersed in aqua solution containing antimicrobial agents for 5 to 10 minutes and padded through squeeze rolls. The fabrics are then dried and cured at a specific temperature and time. The third method is exhaust method. The fabric is soaked in solution containing antimicrobial agents and allowed to reach equilibrium. This method enables the movement of finishing agents from the solution onto the fabric until it is completely exhausted. Spraying. Spraying of antimicrobial agent solutions is not recommended due to the risk of inhalation. This method is particularly suitable for non-oven fabrics. Microencapsulation. Microencapsulation is a process in which liquid droplets or smaller particles are coated with continuous film of polymeric material. It is an important technique for importing functional finishes to textile materials. The capsules formed or applied to fibers by padding, impregnation, exhaust and spraying techniques. Polymer modification. Polymer modification is brought about by means of copolymerization using monomers with bioactive functional groups. Advantage of this method is that the bioactive elements form an integral part of the fiber resulting in durable effects. Disadvantage is that the technology is expensive due to the need of special polymerization plants. Nanotechnology, cotton fabric finished with nanoparticles prepared from neem extract exhibited excellent antimicrobial activity. Antimicrobial activity was retained even after 25 washes whereas the fabric coated with neem extract retained antimicrobial activity only up to 10 washes. Methods for improving the durability of the finish. Insolubilization of the active substances in or on the fiber. Treating the fiber with resin, condensates or cross-linking agents. Microencapsulation of the antimicrobial agents with the fiber matrix. Chemical modification of the fiber by covalent bond formation. Use of graft polymers, homopolymers and copolymerization onto the fiber. The next one is evaluation of antimicrobial activity. Various te test methods have been used to demonstrate the effectiveness of the antibacterial activity. Some of the tests used are agar diffusion test, bacterial reduction test, soil burial test, humidity chamber test. Agar diffusion test is a preliminary test to detect the diffusive antimicrobial finish. It is not suitable for non-diffusive finishes. In quantitative analysis, the difference between the actual bacterial count of the treated and untreated material is assessed. Evaluation of antifungal activity. The antifungal activity of the textile substrate is evaluated by three test methods. Growth test. In this method, the growth of the fungus is evaluated. Zone inhibition test. The evaluation is done by rating the fungus growth in contact to test material and viewing the inhibition zone around the test sample. Wet chamber test. Performance of fungus contaminated textile in the wet chamber is evaluated visually by viewing the degree of growth. Now we will see the applications of antimicrobial finish. Antibacterial finish is used in hygienic use apparel and sportswear. The antibacterial finished undergarments prevent skin related diseases and urinary tract infection. It is also desirable for baby clothing as their skin, thin skin is permeable and highly sensitive to microbes. 
antimicrobial finish is given to industrial fabrics like tents and robes to protect it from mildew and rotting to home furnishings textiles such as carpets shower curtains and upholstery to textiles used in museums hospitals hotels crowded public places and schools as they have the risk of getting infection to conclude health and hygiene has attained importance in recent years unpleasant odor can arise due to a variety of compounds produced in bodily fluids such as perspiration consumers are looking for solutions to odor and microbial problem and the unique benefits provided by antimicrobial finish with advent of new technologies the growing needs of the consumer in the wake of health and hygiene can be fulfilled without compromising the issues related to safety human health and environment tapping new potential antimicrobial substances from nature can considerably minimize the undesirable activities of the antimicrobial products to carve a niche for textile materials this kind of value adding finishes are the need of the art thank you